Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a very special Sunday. We're going to have so much fun today. Today is all about encouragement. And by the end of this, I just hope you feel blessed. You know you've met with the Lord today. We want to welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. We have an extra special birthday this morning. Greg Moore, if you're watching, you better be watching, brother. 50 years old today. So you are now in a decade that I have yet to arrive in. And I have a whole presidential election four years from now before I'm where you're at. Happy birthday my brother. This morning, I want to start by encouraging us. We were just talking um, together with the band and the media team. Um, This morning is all about bringing glory to God. It's declaring, God, you're so good. We're going to see video testimonies, lots of them that you have created. You're helping us run the service today. And I'm telling you, you're going to be so encouraged by these videos. But this morning, as we start, let's open up the word to Jeremiah chapter 10. And this is an awesome scripture. This is an incredible scripture where God, or the prophet Jeremiah, God is speaking through Jeremiah, and he's mocking the idols. He's mocking these idols that people bow their knees, knees to. And he says this in verse 5. He says, their idols are like scarecrows in the cucumber field. So it's, it's just pointless. They, they don't do much. And they cannot speak. They cannot be carried. They cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither is it in them to do good. And then hear the, these words. And this is the declaration of our heart this morning. There is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? For this is what you are due. For among all the wise ones of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. And that's what we declare this morning. So we're going to start off. Let me pray. As soon as I'm done praying, you're going to be introduced to the first video. We're going to sing some songs and we're just going to have a great day in the Lord. Heavenly Father, this morning, we love you. We thank you for your beauty and your goodness. We want to celebrate you. We want to give you our passions and our hearts in our minds today. So receive what we have to offer today as an offering of worship and praise to you. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hi, Orlando North. I miss you all so much. Oh my goodness. But I want to let you all know what I've been up to during this COVID time other than work. And I've been quite a little evangelist and I'm so happy about it. My mom, my dad, and my son Gavin all surrendered to the Lord um, on Easter Sunday. And my dad and Gavin were actually baptized on that day, so that was just so awesome. And then July 31st, my sister surrendered to the Lord. And that just, that meant so much to me um, because I wanted her to know the Lord for so long and just to feel how we feel, you know, that we have, knowing that we have him in our life. So that's what I wanted to share. I love you guys and I miss you all so much and I can't wait to see you all. So
great you are, how great, how great you are. Come on, just declare that. My God, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Amen. We just thank you for being good this morning. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your strength, Jesus. We worship you. We glorify your holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're so good to us, Jesus. wherever you may be, whether it's at home, whether it's at a friend's house, at a family member's house, just begin to declare how great he is. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing.
And it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, only to you. Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing amazing and staying safe. This pandemic has been full of despair, negativity, and loss of hope. However, through this difficult season, God has shown me what faith over fear truly means. Faith over fear is more than just a positive saying. It must be applied to your life wholeheartedly. When this dreadful pandemic began, my mind was flooded with negativity. Then I turned my full attention to God. Trusting in Him showed me that He is powerful and that his power does not weaken, no matter what conflict arises. I encourage you all to put faith over fear during this time and any other challenging time you may face. Although it's easy to fall into the void of negativity, God will be right there to catch you, and he will not let you down. Thank you, Jesus. We'll just continue to give you thanks this morning, Jesus. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Behold the cross, hate to
has bought for me both now and forever you're so good yeah. God you're so sing that again. And God, you're so good. And God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so Take a moment just to tell God how good he is. If he's been good to you this morning, just take a moment and tell him how great he is. You're great, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We give you glory this morning. So God, we thank you for all that you have done, for all that you're going to do. And we give you glory because you're God all by yourself. We thank you because while we're worrying and stressing, you've already worked it out, Jesus. So we ask that you give us strength this morning. We ask that you give us peace this morning. We love you, Jesus. We honor you. And we magnify your holy name. Amen. Yes, God is good. Um, I'm standing in this home where I moved my kids a year ago to the date from Texas to Florida to start another life. I didn't know how anything gonna work out, but through this past year, a lot has happened. I was able to settle the kids in school and activities. I got a job, COVID happened, I got laid off. I was just seeking the Lord. I never lost hope, but just knowing God will take care of us. And he sure has. Right now, I'm about to start um, a, my master's degrees in counseling. And today, just now, I just passed um, my insurance license to sell life insurance. And God knows where he's going to take us. I'm so excited about the future. God is good. Well, I hope these testimonies are really encouraging you. We have some more coming up in just a little bit. Before I jump into the Word, I want to give you a major announcement. The elders and I, we met just the other day, and we have decided that in three weeks, August 30th, is our return date. So we are targeting that as long as things continue to trend downwards in terms of numbers in Florida. We want to get back on August 30th. We've done a number of things, or we've attempted to do a number of things to get us together. Um, some of you guys might have read the comment by Patrick last Sunday. One of the things we were looking at was trying to get into a park, but we can't find a park that will let us in. So... Three weeks from today, we are going to come back to service. We're going to have an 8 o'clock and a 10 o'clock live service. Um, we'll send out more information. We're doing a number of things differently this time um, to keep you safe, to keep us safe, to make everybody feel comfortable that chooses to participate in our live services starting August 30th. Now, also that date, we'll continue to do our live stream at least for a while. So if you don't feel comfortable, if you're not quite ready to come back yet, that's totally fine. We will continue to meet you online. But if you're ready to jump back in, we're going to be be here. So 
we can't wait to see you, and we'll, we'll keep you posted on what's going to go down and everything that you need to know. If you have your Bibles, open with me to Psalm 121 this morning. My main objective, my only objective, is to really encourage you with the gospel. I, I was thinking this morning, early this morning, I was going through my head about 2020 and just imagining what it's going to be like 20, 30 years from now when we mention the year 2020. I, I feel like it's going to be one of those phrases that kind of just jolts us a little bit, gives us a little bit of anxiety when we hear 2020. It's like PTSD kicks in because we're like, I remember that year. Those seven months were the longest decade of my life. And so we, that was a joke in case anybody writes in the comments, that's not a decade, that's only seven months. I know. And so in this, this has been the craziest year. And one of the things that's unique about this year is in all of our seasons of our lives, whether we're going through good times or bad times, there's always somebody that's going through the opposite end of the spectrum, right? So we could be going through something really good, something beneficial, something that we're really enjoying in this season, but there's always somebody that's not going through it. And you're like, please don't rain on my parade, or vice versa. You're going through hell, and somebody's going through a good time, and you're like, stop taunting me, right? And so we've always got somebody that's on a different level in terms of the season that we're in. But 2020 is the great equalizer. We're all in it together. E even if you're going through some good things, good things are happening in your life, there's still this dark cloud that's looming over everything, right? You've been impacted by it, people you love, yourself, your business, your health, um, all of this, even just being quarantined the church, all of your life has been turned upside down. We've all been impacted by that. And so this morning, what I want to do through these testimonies, through the song selection, and through this devotional that I'm doing this morning, is I just want to encourage you. I feel like that's where we're at right now. All of us just need to be reminded of the hope that we do have, because culture and the world is screaming everything but that. So here's what I want you to do. I, I want you to join me. Let's all hop in the DeLorean together, okay? So for those of you guys that have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm talking back to the future movie. Let's get in the DeLorean, and let's rewind back to March 8th. 2020. Five months ago yesterday. Five months. It seems like 10 years ago. March 8th. I don't know if you remember what you were doing. I remember what seven people were doing because on March 8th, 2020, let me set the scene for you. This was a weekend that I was down in Boca Raton um, getting Haley a tour of Florida Atlantic where she is about to go to school in a couple weeks. So we were down there and so Duran, Pastor Duran, was preaching on that Sunday morning and it was only his second time preaching here at our church. So you guys were still relatively new to him. You, you didn't really know him, but he was preaching. And I remember going into that Sunday, we were wondering, do we cancel service? COVID was brand new, right? We, we all knew what COVID was, and everybody was starting to freak out about it. There was all these rumors about what it was, what we're going to do, how long it's going to be here. And so we do this service live on March 8th, but we didn't know whether we should or whether we shouldn't. After the service was over, Duran calls me, and we basically find out seven, eight people show up between the two. I'm exaggerating. There are a few more than that, but not many more. And it was a pretty empty day. And so over the course of that week between March 8th and March 15th, we made the, the obvious decision, we really didn't have any choice, that it was time for us to go to online services. So we, like most of the churches in America and even around the world, all of a sudden had a new reality. Everything was turned upside down, and here we are where we're doing these virtual services. We're like, man, it will only be like a month, maybe six weeks tops, and five months later, here we are. You remember when we first started doing these online services, not just for Orlando North, but everybody globally, there, there was this excitement. It was kind of strange, wasn't it? There was this passion, there was this enthusiasm for doing church online. We're like, we, we can reach new people, which, by the way, we have, okay? So we can reach new people. Um, I can sleep in on Sunday mornings. I can come to church in my PJs and eat my Honey Nut Cheerios. I don't know how many times I've said that over the last five months. But it was this whole new thing. There was buzz. There was excitement. There was passion. For those of us that follow the numbers, those, that first month, we had crazy attendance at Orlando North. During the service, live during the services, we had three, four hundred views going on, which represented six, seven hundred people were tuning into our service when we first began this thing. And, and you had some people that were out there going, could this be the new reality for the church? Is this what it's going to look like going forward? And there's some people advocating for that going, this, this would be awesome if this is what church is, because I can do church from the comfort of my own home. I can just watch, be a part. It, it, it's really, really simple. In the back of my head, I'm sitting there in my heart. I'm going, this isn't going to last. 
This isn't going to last very long. It's going to, just because of the, the idea of everybody's lives revolving around a screen, eventually we're going to get bored of it. Children are in school on cameras. We're doing our Zoom meetings, FaceTime, YouTube, Facebook. Eventually it's just going to grow old. But really what it's all about is this, this is not how the church was designed. This isn't how it's supposed to be. The ecclesia, the Greek word for an assembly, a gathering together is what the church is going. How, how do we go and be if we never came to go, right? And so in all of this, the church was designed to be the ecclesia, this gathering of people to worship and congregate together and then go and be Christ's church to the world for his glory. And what's happening, and you feel this, you know this, this isn't me saying anything controversial. The longer this goes on, the easier it is for us to fall into angst in a funk, we're depressed, we're sad, we're nervous because there's so much uncertainty in, uh, in our worlds and in our lives, and, and we, it starts to fade. So all of a sudden, the passion that we had for online services, all of a sudden, it's like, I don't know if I really need to show up this Sunday. Is it really a big deal? It's just the same old thing. And this is what I want to speak into this morning. And I want to remind us, this is really cool. This has been a fun little adventure. As we're in the DeLorean, let's go back to March and let's go back to the beginning of this thing. Because you remember what we did as a church? We stepped out of our series, The Sermon on the Mount, for just a season. And we did a series called In Crisis As It Is in Heaven. And it might be one of the most important series we've ever done. And I hope that it doesn't kind of evade you and kind of disappear in the fog of all the craziness of our life. Because what we did in this series in Crisis As It Is in Heaven is we emphasized, no matter what scripture we used, we pointed out the fact that the most important thing in our lives right now is the presence of Jesus. That, that it's not about the circumstances, it's not about the waves, it's not about the storm, it's not about quarantine, it's not about a virus, it's all about Jesus. We started, we opened up Psalm 23, the 23rd Psalm, um, where we talked about the Lord is my shepherd, and we talked about, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So whether I'm by still calm waters or I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, it doesn't matter. The point is not the circumstance. The point is that our good shepherd is with us, and if our eyes are locked on him, our hope comes in him, not the circumstances. Same thing with Psalm 27. Do not fear. Wait upon the Lord. It's all about his presence. The main text as we walked through that series was Matthew chapter 8. Maybe you remember that one. There's a storm and Jesus and his disciples are out on a boat. Some of his disciples are professional fishermen who have been on raging seas before. They know the water. But this storm is so violent and so atrocious that even professional fishermen are freaking out. They wake up Jesus and like, Jesus, we're going to die. We're going to perish. And you're taking a nap. And Jesus basically looks at them. And he's like, what are you freaking out about? The son of God, the son of man is in the boat with you, where you're looking at the waves and you're looking at the storms, you need to remember who's in the boat with you. Keep your eyes on him. And we finish the series with Jeremiah 29, which is always appropriate for graduates or seems appropriate for graduates, where the Israelites are in bondage. They're in slavery. And in it, we discover that whether you're in bondage, in captivity, or you're free, it doesn't matter. The point is, whatever, like if you're living your lives, you've got a job and everything's going great, or you're in quarantine for five months, those circumstances matter. But our hope doesn't come in those things. Our hope comes in Jesus. So I want to remind us of that. I feel like all of us, we, we are so absent-minded or we're so forgetful so quickly that we forget that this is what it's about. And we just need somebody to come and encourage us and remind us that it's really about him. And even though these last five months, there's no denying how dark they have been, that God is still doing something. And he is our hope. And we need to cling to him in this season, listen, you know this, right? You know that any time we attach or tether our faith to our circumstances, man, it's going to be a mess. We're going to be erratic. There's going to be bipolar faith and bipolar relationship with Jesus if it's all about our circumstances because our circumstances ebb and flow. Man, I had one of the, like this week, I had a great day, one of the greatest days I've had in a long time and the worst day I've had in a long time in the same day. And so this is our reality, and if we tether, like I said, our faith to that, then our relationship with Jesus is going to be all over the place. But if we tether our lives and our faith to the rock, which is Jesus, these things don't change. So I had this idea. I, I, I'm going through, and I've been praying for you. I've been praying for the church. I know our staff has, our pastors have, our elders have. We've been praying for you. We take this seriously. We're not just coasting through these five months. We really want to hear God's voice for your lives, and we want to encourage you, especially today. 
So a couple weeks ago, like I said last week, um, Caden and I were up in Michigan visiting my parents and my brother. And while we were up there, Caden and I made a trip, quick trip to Ohio. And one night we had to drive back after two very long days. We drove back from Sandusky, Ohio up to Midland, Michigan. It's a four hour trip. And we left Sandusky, Ohio at about 8 o'clock, 8.30 at night. So we were going to get home late. We were already tired. We get in the car, and Caden does what Caden, he's a teenager. He falls asleep immediately. He's gone. And I'm like, cool, man. Just enjoy your rest. Enjoy your slumber. You do you, and I'm going to drive. And so while I'm driving, I'm like, God, what am I going to do with the next four hours, right? And it was really cool, a, a unique opportunity for me, because we don't all get four-hour gaps where there's like, what can I do? Like, our calendars are always full. And so I'm like, I'm going to spend some really intimate time with the Lord. My son's asleep, and, and so I'm going to spend some time with him. If you've never driven the roads of Ohio and Michigan, there's no traffic, so my brain isn't consumed with this. It's late at night and roads that are always empty. And I'm driving, and here's what I do. I, I have this plan that I'm going to play my worship playlist. Yes, I have a worship playlist, and I'm going to play it for about 30 minutes. Then I'm going to spend the next three hours just praying and meditating and, and listening to the Lord speak, and I'm begging him, I'm, Lord, I need this. I'm not, at this point, it wasn't about the church. It was about me. It was like, God, I need some space, some margin with you. I need you to touch my heart. I'm desperate. I'm going through some stuff. I'm going through stuff at, at work. I'm going through stuff in the family. All of this stuff is playing into it. My health, all of it. I'm like, but at the end of the day, let's put that aside. And all I want is I want to connect with you. So I start playing my worship playlist. I think the second song was the song that we just sang. By passion, God, you're so good. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with this song. The chorus part of it is decades old, and it's something that I grew up on. And it's this simple song that I love so much because it's completely about him. And my favorite kind of worship, my favorite worship music in the world are declaration songs of praise to God, where they just declare how great he is. The, the songs that have me in them, I'm okay with those, and there's a place, there certainly is a place for those. But at the end of the day, I can live off of worship that just praises and elevates God. Because what that does, as I declare how good he is and how great he is, is that I'm reminded that I'm not in control. And I'm reminded that in my life, he is everything. So I'm in the car and I'm listening to this song, God, you're so good. And, all, and I, I don't do this often. In this, I just feel like the audible voice of God just talking to me about, share this with the church, what I'm doing in your heart. And he did it for like three and a half hours. For three and a half hours, he's speaking this into my heart. He's like, now that I've touched your heart, share it with the church. Take it to the church. I'm like, but we're really trying to get through this Sermon on the Mount, God. You, you had me do this. And man, this thing keeps taking breaks and sidesteps. Don't you want me to get through the Sermon on the Mount? He's like, no, I want you to stop. My people need to be encouraged. So take God, you're so good. And here's what he gave me the idea. He gave me this idea of what we're doing today with these videos. I want, them to I want the church to help you preach. So have them do these one-minute videos just glorifying God. So that's what today is completely about. It's totally about that. And while I'm praying through this, while I'm receiving this, I, I've turned to this scripture. I remember this scripture out of Psalm 121. And this is going to be our guidepost for the next three weeks. Let me read this to you. It's Psalm 121. It's eight verses. It's very short. And it's known as a song of ascent, which I will explain in a moment. So this is what David writes. I lift my eyes up to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made both heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. Anybody need to hear this this morning? The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So I'm in my car. I'm thinking about this scripture. I'm listening to this song. I'm thinking about you. And God just pours this on me. And I'm like, let's, church, let's see what God will do when we glorify him and we come together to encourage one another. You've heard my voice so much over five months. What if we heard each other's voice? And what God is doing in this passage of Scripture in Psalm 121, is remi he's reminding us of two things. Number one, he's reminding us that he has not checked out. God has not checked out. You need to know that because right now in our lives, a lot of us are struggling with that. We're wrestling with that. God, where are you? It feels like you've gone to the front desk of the hotel. You've turned in your key while we're still sleeping, and we woke up, and we can't find you. Where are you? Have you checked out? 
And David is assuring us that absolutely, unequivocally, God has not checked out. In this passage alone, he shows us who God is. He labels him as five things. He says he's the creator, he's the keeper and sustainer, he's the helper, he's our ever-present God, and finally, he's our protector. Think about that. He's creator, sustainer, helper, present, and protector. He's all these things, but he's not just a version of these things. He is the epitome of these things. He defines these things. There is nobody that he reports to. There is not a supreme being that's over him. He is the highest. So he's not a creator. He's the creator. He's not a sustainer or keeper. He is the sustainer, the helper, the present, and the protector. He's all of these things. And David's encouragement here is in your times of trouble, it's a song of ascent, as you look to God in your trouble, you are reminded that he is always with you and there is nothing higher than him. Think about it this way. Did you ever get lost as a, as a kid, as a child? Were you ever like away from your parents and you freaked out? The first time, I think it's the only time I ever remember actually doing this. Um, I was probably about five or six years old and my mom and I went to Kmart. I, I guarantee my mom doesn't even remember this because she doesn't even know I was lost. And that doesn't make her a bad mom. You'll hear why. <laughs> Just, I realized how terrible that sounded. We're in Kmart um, up in Michigan. I, I heard of Walmart, but I didn't step foot into a Walmart until I was in college. But we had Kmart, which basically the same thing. So we're in Kmart, but my favorite thing to do at Kmart was to go down the toy aisle. So when you're a little kid, you remember the toy aisle? In the toy aisle, you skip all the Barbie dolls and all that, the G.I. Joes, the, the BB guns or the cap guns, right? Everything that is pretty much secured now, but little kids had access to these cap guns. And then any kind of football, basketball, baseball, that's where I was found. And so one day I'm there with my mom, and my mom's in one aisle, and I, I, as far as I could remember, I'm sure my mom told me I could go back over to the next aisle. This was back in the day when kids could just do whatever. And I go over to the toy aisle, and all of a sudden I'm playing with these toys. I'm playing with the Nerf football. I'm shooting hoops into that big bin that has these rubber balls that are like ginormous. And all of a sudden I realize mom's not there. And I freak out. I can't see mom. I, I don't know where mom is. And my heart drops, and I go into ultimate panic mode because I'm like, mom is checked out. Mom's gone, and without mom, she, she's my authority. She's my supreme being. She is everything. She's my protector. And when she's gone, I panic. Now, was my mom gone? Nah, she was one aisle over. As a matter of fact, I know this about my mom. There's a really good chance that my mom was at the end of the aisle watching me. She was very present. She knew exactly where I was. She has not taken her eye off me, but I took my eye off her. And so in all of this is this panic mode and this desperation mode of what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, where is mom? And mom's right there. In our lives right now, this is exactly what's going on. If we feel this desperation where God's absent, God's just disappeared, listen, the promise of Scripture is he's ever-present. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. His eye is always locked on the sparrow. He is looking at you even if you are panicking in the toy aisle because you got distracted He's there, and David uses this incredible lingo, this incredible metaphor, where he says, God will not slumber, God will not sleep. This is our God. He, he will not take a nap. He's not going to lose you because he got distracted because he was so tired. And I'm looking at that, and I'm listening to this, and I'm going, oh, there's something I identify with God. Finally, I know I am in the image of God because I'm not sleeping either. The last five months have been torture for me to try to fall asleep every single night. I'm like, okay, God, you're not sleeping, I'm not sleeping, we've got something in common. The problem is the reason for our sleeplessness, completely different. You see, I'm up at night because I am losing control. I'm up at night going, what kind of mistakes did I make today? Is that going to burn me? What am I going to do tomorrow? How is this going to pan out? How is this going to play out in the future? How are the finances going to work? What about my health? All of these things that I think I have control over, that I have absolutely no control over, I'm freaking out about. And God's over here going, I'm awake too. We should spend some time together. But I'm not awake because I'm trying to figure out tomorrow. I've got tomorrow. I'm there already, bro. And so I've got it all figured out. The reason that I'm not sleeping is because I am always, always working for you. Always. And we're like, wait, wait, wait. That, that doesn't match my theology. My theology is I work for you. I'm always working for you. And, and, and to an extent, there's, tr there's truth to that. We do work for God. We are obedient to God, but it doesn't start with us. It starts with him. He is the primary worker. Listen to these texts. I want to show you some cool verses. Isaiah 64, 4 says this. From of old, no one has perceived or heard by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you 
who acts for those who wait for him. He's always looking to act. He's looking for somebody who will be obedient so he can step in and act and do the things that he wants to do. The cool thing about God is he never naps. He never takes a break. He never takes a smoke break. He never takes a lunch break. I can't believe I just said God never takes a smoke break. It's true, but it's weird. God never takes a dinner break. God never goes to the beach for a weekend because he's exhausted. And you're like, well, what, God rested on the seventh day. God took, yeah, he, he did to set an example and atone for us because we needed it. But if we think God really needs a nap, like God can't handle this, then we're serving a pretty weak God. But God never sleeps. He never, he, he never takes a day off. He is constantly on the scene for you. Second Chronicles 16 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support, not just mediocre support, but to give strong support to those whose heart blameless toward him. And then finally, if we haven't learned our lesson yet that God is really awake and present and working for us, Psalm 46 says this, God is our refuge and our strength. He's a very present help in trouble, not just a present help, super present, like uber present help in trouble. Therefore, because he's present, we will not fear, though the, listen to this, though the earth gives way, though the mountain be moved in the heart, into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though COVID is raging, though unemployment is raging, though the economy is dropping, though we have to wear masks everywhere, though all of this stuff is going on, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, God is our refuge and he will not be moved. Ladies and gentlemen, God has not fled the scene. He's not scared of your problems. He's not scared of your cries. He's not scared of your des- desperation. He's right here. So two things we need to be remi- reminded of. Number one, God is not checked out. Number two, number two, you are in a daily fight in the flesh. Every single day of your life, you are in a, a battle for your flesh. It, it, when you read this Psalm, Psalm 121, it starts with, I will lift my eyes to the hills. And then it, st- it continues with this question, from where does my help come from? Answer, my help comes from the Lord. Why, why does the author here write, I lift my eyes to the hills. Are the, are the answers found in the hills? Like, I, I'm looking for answers, and oh, there's a mountain. So there's my answer. It's in the mountain. Is God some kind of weird figure up on the top of the mountain with a long beard, cross-legged? And he, he's like, do we need to go to the Andes Mountains, the Swiss Alps? Do we need to go to the Rocky Mountains? Where do we go to find God? I lift my eyes to the hill. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Let me explain this, and then Charla and the band are going to sing one of my favorite songs. Psalm 120, actually Psalm 121, the one we're talking about today, from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134 are 15 particular psalms that we know that have been labeled the psalms or the songs of ascent, okay? So the psalms of ascent. These psalms are relatively short except for one. I think it's Psalm 132 is a little bit longer so people can memorize them. And these songs of ascent were very particular songs that we would sing, and they're called psalms of ascent because what they're doing is while you're in the valley, while you're in a pit, while you're in the valley of the shadow of death, you are declaring a truth about God that he is going to ascend you out of this pit, that he is above this, that he is bigger than this, that he is supreme in this. So by faith, I'm declaring his goodness. So if we're in COVID and we can't do the things that we're used to and we're wondering how everything's going to turn out and we have an election coming up and we've got um, systemic racism stuff that we're dealing with, we got all cultures just upside down. In these moments, we are in a perfect posture to sing a song of ascent. This particular psalm, Psalm 121, is really interesting. Psalm 121 was sung at a specific season for the Jewish people back in the day. The Jewish people had three festivals where they would show, or three feasts that they would travel to Jerusalem for every single year. In the autumn, they would travel back to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacle. The Feast of Tabernacle is fascinating because all it was was a commemoration or a celebration of what God had done for the Jewish ancestors in the 40 years that they were wandering the wilderness. So it wasn't a celebration that God brought them out of Egypt. That was the Feast of Passover. They've already been brought out. They've already crossed the Red Sea. They're on the way to their promised land. And between the Red Sea and the promised land, they get hardened hearts. They start complaining. They start murmuring about God. And God's like, all right, until I get your attention, you're going to be stuck in this wilderness. And they're stuck there for 40 years. For 40 years, they're lost. No matter where they go, they cannot find their way out. For 40 years, they're wondering, how is this going to turn out? How is this going to play out? What's going to happen with my business? What's going to happen? Well, they didn't have business. They were not in that position yet. What's going to happen with my family? 
What's going to happen with my future? God, where are you? Have you checked out? And so they're wandering around this wilderness for 40 years. Now, all, all of a sudden, let's put that in perspective with COVID. Five months. We really can't hold a candle to 40 years, can we? But here we are in this wilderness, and we're here. And now, were the people celebrating that they were in the wilderness? No. The celebration, this Psalm of Ascent, Psalm 121, being sung on the way to Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles was sung as a celebration that in the wilderness, God took care of them. There was manna from heaven. God was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He was always with them. He was always present. So centuries later, they're singing these Psalms of Ascent, this particular one, Psalm 121, reminding what their ancestors went through, but particularly reminding that God took care of them. Now imagine, just put yourself there. There there are people traveling from all over Israel to Jerusalem. They're on these dangerous roads that we'll talk about next week. They're on these really dangerous roads. And while they're there in the autumn, they're going for the Feast of Tabernacles. Everybody, thousands of Jews, simultaneously in unison, singing, I lift my eyes to the hill. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. He is my right hand. He he does not sleep. He does not slumber. He is an ever-present God. And they're singing this song. Some of them are probably good musicians. Some of them are probably terrible, but it's in unison. You know what I miss about being congregational and being together with you? It's these moments of worship with these guys where it's not just these guys. It's you. It's the ones that have really beautiful voices, and then it's Gary. And we're all singing together, and we all hear each other's voices. And it doesn't matter what we sound like. We're declaring our praise to God. And this psalm of ascent in the pit is saying, God, I trust you. And that's where we feed off each other. This is where we encourage each other. And this is the heart of David, isn't it, as we read the psalms? We don't just see it here in the psalm of ascent, but later, earlier in Psalm 103, what does David say? Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. And he's not just reciting a poem. He's ordering his soul to do something. In Psalm 121, he said, lift up my eyes to the hills. Lift up my eyes to Mount Zion, which is a representation of God. You're on this path, this dangerous path, but Zion is coming. No matter where you're traveling from in Israel, Jerusalem is the, most high, the highest elevation, and Zion is the highest elevation of that, and it represents God. So no matter if you're coming north, south, west, or east, you see this hill, and this is where the presence of the Lord is. And you're traveling this tough journey, this road, you're going through all of this stuff, and David writes, lift up your eyes. Look at him. Where's my help come from? Right there. And now we have Emmanuel, God with us. And culture says, when you're in trouble, look within. Fix yourself. Look at your beautiful self. Scripture, gospel says, no, 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 look at Jesus. He is the author and finisher of your faith. He is your redeemer. He is your life. He is your forgiver. He is your grace. He is your hope. He is your peace. Get your eyes on him. So ladies and gentlemen, this morning, my encouragement to you is get your eyes off of you. Get your eyes off your problem. But, but if I leave my problems, if I leave my problems, then what's going to, God's going to take care of them. God's got you. Get your eyes on him. That doesn't mean you don't have responsibility and obedience. Get your eyes on him. Lift your eyes to the hills where your help comes from. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. For he is my creator. He is my sustainer. He is my helper. He is my present. And he is my protector. God has not checked out. And every single day you're fighting a battle for your attention in the flesh. Are you going to give it to the wind and the waves? Or are you going to give it to the creator that promises to always be with you? Let's encourage each other with these videos. Check this out. At the beginning of the COVID issues, the words I spoke to the Lord at first were, Lord, what is my purpose at this time in this season? Please show me. Years ago, in a most dark, broken time in my life, I cried out from deep groanings of despair. I wailed. Finally, I said, I yield. Immediately, my groaning stopped. My tears stopped. And I stood up and freely walked into peace. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yes, things are not normal at this time. Yet, no, He is able to carry you and me to cross over from darkness to light, 
We have purpose. Trust Him. Do your best. Yield what needs to be yielded to Him and be free to do what He has purposed for you and me to do. Let love come from each of us to those around us. Remember to love one another. Good morning, my ONC family. I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> Isn't this a great idea? Thank you, Rob, for putting us together this way so we can see each other and hear each other and high five each other and greet each other. <laughs> um, I love fellowship, don't you? <laughs> what is God teaching me in this pandemic? Number one, draw close to him. Be intimate, he's intimate with us. Be intimate and let him uh, behold us. Take time to behold him and let him behold us. Behold the Lord. And the second thing I think he's, he's impressing on me is to be a flipper. Uh, the enemy means for evil, but God is meant for good. So when there's a challenge and a hurdle in my life, I'm gonna take that hurdle and I'm gonna go higher. I'm gonna go higher and flip that around to make it a, a subject of praise and victory for the Lord Jesus Christ. Take your challenges and use them. Use them in intercession. Use them in service. Praise the Lord for what we're afflicted with because he trusts us with it. So I love you all. I can't wait to see you again. God bless you. Bye. Hi everyone. My name is Thad Knowles. 2020 has been a challenging but encouraging year. I became unemployed in mid-May, but fortunately I've had a part-time job since then. Obviously one of my priorities has been to find full-time employment since I have alimony and child support commitments. However, I've had some extra time on my hands and God has placed it in my heart to care and connect with many of my family members, including my sisters, my children, and my ex-spouse. My ex-spouse has had COVID-type symptoms and was admitted to the hospital for several days. Fortunately, she was released as she tested negative. One of my single adult children, as well as one of my apartment neighbors, have both had COVID for four weeks and God has placed it on my heart to care for them. I must say that God has greatly encouraged and directed me through both pastors' sermons during this pandemic season. The last sermon on deferring to and serving one another, especially the verses in Matthew chapter 20, where Jesus has come to give his life a ransom for many, has really given me a purpose to serve others, not only in this pandemic season, but hopefully for all seasons. Thank you. One thing I've really loved about this time is that everybody seems to be so much more intentional about connecting with each other because we don't get to see each other very often. And that's been, incredible hello orlando north family it's chris and bev caldwell we sure miss everyone hope everyone's doing good hey guys we're just taking it one day at a time it hasn't been easy uh, but it's been a great time to really spend time with each other and with the lord and learning how to uh be still in his presence yeah been a season of taking care of our parents as well, which has been great. Um, retirement has been very, very good to me and enjoying that. And we're just gonna- We're take, just growing old together. Yeah, take, <laughs> take one day at a time, but we miss everyone and we love y'all and blessings on you. Okay. Take care. See you bye soon. Bye-bye. Hello, Orlando North, Ohio. I've missed serving the Lord and you each Sunday through this season the Lord has shown me that I am not alone and that you are not alone, that God is always with us. We might be lonely, but we have the assurance that he is with us. In 1 Chronicles 28, 20, it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed, for the Lord God is with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Over the last few months, I've been so encouraged through so many sweet cards, emails, texts, and cute videos from church members. Thank you so much for sending me love and virtual hugs. Soon we will be together to share in worship and maybe the cafe will be able to whip up some celebrational feasts. Until that time, 
know that I love you. Miss Sue. Hi, Orlando North. We just wanted to have a moment to just um, tell you a little bit about what's happened in our time of COVID and the thankfulness that we have for God. Um, in this season, we were very blessed that um, even though Timothy's job shut down, that we were still good and everything was okay. And we were blessed with the ability to stay in our home. But the biggest blessing out of all of it was just the ability that Timothy got to be here with me for a couple weeks before Theodore was born. We got to see Jacob start walking right before he was born. And I was able to be here because I wasn't at work. And we were able to spend time as family making memories those first few months that I wasn't working. And we were able to spend time with family and get to be able to get closer together and build the family that God would not like us to have. Yes, and we were able um, to just pull some things together and be blessed with family and find some land a little bit closer um, to Timothy's parents. And we're just um, been excited that we've been given the opportunity to, to dream together and to start to see our dreams come to fruition. So we just love everybody and we hope you have a great day. Hello, Orlando North George. Uh, bless all of you. Uh, good seeing the God do for me this year. Uh, it is my job. Precisely, I'm here behind this truck. Behind me is this truck. Uh, it's, a, it's a good company uh, from Illinois. Uh, I've been doing really, really good in 2020. 2020 uh, regardless of COVID-19, uh, where million, million Americans have been losing their job. And I'm praying for them to get a restore his, his job. And the other good thing that good uh, God did, do to, did to me this year is uh, I've, I've been married for 37 years and uh, uh, we broke up two years ago with my wife and uh, God out the blue, out the blue, I don't, I don't see good thing, I call this miracle, he restored uh, my marriage. So let me introduce uh, Pollyanna, this is Polly. Hello. Polly say hello, we are back together, we are back together. In the midst of the pandemic, our seven-year-old grandson, Gabriel, was diagnosed with a very rare form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The PET scan showed that the cancer was in his shoulder, his back, and his hip, which explained why the little boy could hardly walk and his shoulder hurt so much. An army of people were raised up to begin praying for Gabriel. He spent 34 days in St. Jude's Hospital for Children, going through the first round of chemo. After that first round, they did this, the next PET scan. They could find no cancer. The oncologist said to his parents, we could not have given you a better report. There is no cancer. If a picture's worth a thousand words, wait till you see the video and let's just see what God has done in this little boy's life. The little town where he lives, they asked Gabriel to come and pitch the first couple of pitches for the little league game. Isn't that beautiful, these stories of what God has done? This morning, we're going to finish off the morning with a really special song that Charlotte's going to lead us in called The Song of Ascent, and I think it's also called Highlands. But this is what we're talking about with these particular psalms. So enjoy, sing along with us. Let's worship Jesus together.
you grace the other side and know oh, how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply cause in the highlands and the You're neither more or less inclined. I would search and stop at nothing. You're just not that hard to find. I will praise you on the mountain. I will praise you when the mountains in my way. You're the sun. I will praise you in the mountains in my way. 
North, both friends and family. I hope that you all were encouraged by the testimonies and by the message. We just want you to know that God is good, no matter what it looks like or where you are right now. In the end, God is good, and we hope that this was a reminder for you that God is good. I have a couple of announcements for you before we leave. Uh, first, Pastor Rob is continuing his high school boys group. So if you are interested in, in attending and you have not responded yet, please send Pastor Rob an email or get in contact with him. You can email him at rob at orlandonorth.com. Uh, secondly, uh, thank you so much for continuing to give. We have been able to continue to do this week in and week out because you all have been faithful. We've been able to give groceries to Altamont Elementary School. We've been able to provide uh, school supplies and things like that. So your giving has gone a long way during this time, and we thank you so much for that. You can give by going to orlandonorth.com slash give. And then also, I, I hope that you heard what Pastor Rob said at the beginning of the service. He said that on August 30th, we are going to be back live, and I cannot wait to see you all again. So remember, August 30th, we're going to come back live here. God willing, we'll be back in this place, and I cannot wait to see you all and tell you some type of corny joke, because when you guys laugh at them, I laugh at them, and they're great. So before we leave, say these words of benediction together. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Now take what you have received today and go and be Christ Church to the world. We love you. We miss you. Cannot wait till we're back together again on August 30th. God bless.